today we turn to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. Then Jesus came from Galilee to Jordan to John to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented, and when Jesus was baptized, he went up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. This is the reading of the word. Have you ever been in that grocery line? And the person ahead of you is on their cell phone, talking really loud, you know, ignoring everything about what's going on in the day, except for the phone call. And you have to think that if they waited just maybe another 30 seconds, they could have been free to talk and would have still put all of their attention to the person and to the task of actually checking out who's been there. I always feel really bad for the cashier, don't you? Because they're not able to do their job because of being ignored. Our time, though, it's an incredibly valuable commodity, isn't it? Whether we're at work or at play or doing any of the tasks that we do during a day, there's only 24 hours to get it all done. And we still have to sleep and eat. And hopefully those take up about eight hours of our day. So multitasking is, is, is the name of the game, isn't it? We cook our dinner and help our kids with homework or have a conversation with our spouse or significant other. We talk on the phone and are on the computer at the exact same time. We watch television and have our family dinners. We rarely, though, give our whole attention and our whole devotion to any one task or any particular thing. Now let us take a look at John. John the Baptist. He was singularly devoted and knew his purpose in life, didn't he? Biblical scholars often refer to John the Baptist as a wild man. He dressed in the animal skin, and the description of him says that he was rough and abrupt. He prophesied about God and about the coming of Christ, and from even what little we have of him, we can suppose and sort of imagine that he had that attitude, you know the one I'm talking about, where he did not care what people thought, and he, was, he had his task and he was going to do them. He knew his purpose, he knew his place, and he knew his role. We know he was cousin to Jesus, right? He was the son of Elizabeth, and as we know from his father Zechariah's prophecy, John was not the Messiah. He was the messenger. The Messiah was that mightier one who was coming after him. He was just simply John. Just simply being John doesn't sound like a lot, does it? There is, however, great power in accepting who we are in light of God. John the Baptist knew his purpose and he stuck to it. He was happy with his life and served in the way that he could by being John the Baptizer. And we know through our scripture today, he even, although it took some convincing that this is what he was to do, was blessed enough to baptize Jesus. We have to admit 
something, don't we? We as Christians are not always as comfortable as John with our purposes in this life, are we? It's the truth. We struggle. We struggle to reconcile what it means to be a Christian within the society of today. We struggle to find our Christian purpose. I mean, it's really hard to remember to be a Christian when somebody cuts you off while driving. It can be rather difficult to remember to be a Christian in the middle of an argument. And we know who's going to win it. We often forget about God and our godly identities established through our knowledge of Christ in living out our day to day, don't we? We're God's children, though. And in being God's children, we have a purpose and a calling automatically stamped on us. We have a purpose and a calling to serve. John identified his purpose and his calling. Many would have called him the Messiah. But he said, no, that is not who I am. We don't hear in our scriptures about any of the frustrations that went along with his identity. We don't hear about the problems that might have arisen, except for that singular, you know, oh, that's not me. You're thinking of the other guy. We really only hear in our scriptures that John answered the call to do what God called him to do. And that simply, my friends, is all we are called to do, isn't it? We're called to live our lives by serving one another and loving one another as God loves us. It's the start of a new year. And we experience a lot in a year's time span, don't we? A lot changes. We change. We grow. We develop. Our families change. Dynamics change. A lot can happen. Time is a gift, and we're called to be good stewards of our time so that we can serve our Lord in a variety of ways. The question, though, becomes, can we do it? Can we serve in the way that we are being called? We have to take into consideration all the different parts of our lives and weigh the pros and the cons and fit it all into our schedules and our day timers and our phone calendars, I admit. Well, is that what we're asked to do by God, though? See, shouldn't we be putting God first? Isn't that the first commandment? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. God first, and everything else second. <clears throat> we often, though, ignore God, even with the best of intentions and in the best of realities. We ignore God's presence in our lives outside of church on Sunday. We don't normally listen to the hymns that we hear on Sunday on the radio, do we? If you do, I'm impressed. We don't always pray as much. We don't always stand up and sit down in unison. We don't read our Bibles as often as we should. We don't pray as much as we could. However, it's a new year, isn't it? We're only two weeks in. And sometimes in the new year we make those resolutions that call us to reprioritize our lives. We're so willing to do it in cleaning out our closets. I've done that. We're so willing to do it in making those agenda moments, those things that say, oh, I'm going to start working out this year. Right? We're so willing to reprioritize our lives on a personal level. But how, how often do we re 
we prioritize our spiritual lives, our faith lives. John gives us this poignant example of someone who answered the call and focused his life on his calling to God first and everything else was second. While it is a difficult task, it is imperative to our spiritual lives and our spiritual well-being to focus on God first and everything else second. However, in focusing, there's also more to focus on. You see, there's a question of our focus and calling, not just as individuals, but also our focus and our calling as a body of believers. There sometimes has to be a distinct difference between our individual calling and our calling as the collective. We all recognize this, right? Most of us are aware of what it means to put aside our own agendas for another person, right? We do it. It's a natural thing. However, sometimes it is difficult in the church to do that. Because in the church, we really stink at focusing on what our mission is as a body. We have this on this day, right? We have this on another. And we flit in small ways back and forth from thing to thing. But can we truly make an impact? And sometimes we find ourselves burned out on the small stuff. We in our humanness tend to forget sometimes that our collective talents are an amazing and profound and powerful entity in sharing our faith with the world, particularly when it is focused together. However, this is difficult. Because we have that history, don't we? We have a history that we have to live up to as a church, right? We have a history and an identity. We live with refrains like, we used to, or back when I was young, or when I first started. Oh, we've been doing it this way for years. For decades. Oh, we've been doing it this way for forever. We catch ourselves in those refrains a lot, don't we, as a church? We catch ourselves in them and we rest in them as what our mission is and what we should be doing. However, we forget to pause even in our checkout with the minister lines. We forget to pause and take that moment to listen to God's call in our hearts for where we are headed as a congregation. Because it's more than just me, or you, or you, or everyone. Look around you. Literally. We're more than ourselves. We are a body. Discernment is what it takes. And it's one of those fantastic and wonderful spiritual gifts that asks us to take a step back, to reassess, make changes, and then move forward. We do this so naturally within our personal lives. Something's not working and we stop and say, oh, I can fix this. But as a body of believers, we struggle to do that. But sometimes we have to. 
We answer our phones in all sorts of situations and in all sorts of times. And we make choices depending on how busy we are or who it is. We make decisions on whether... <coughs> pardon me. We make decisions on whether to put that call first or not. So I had to ask, what if it was God calling you? What if it was God calling you to do your best and serving out of love to those around you? What if it was God calling us to focus our mission in a way we might not be expecting? What if it was just plain God? calling to tell you that you are beloved. Your phone is ringing. Are you going to answer it? Thank <laughs> you.